Okay, hello everyone, welcome back to another video. So this is going to be the first in a series of hopefully two, three or four videos about Bernoulli numbers, which is a really fascinating sequence of numbers that shows up in all sorts of places in maths. We're going to be deriving them today the way that Bernoulli did, the way that Jacob Bernoulli first found them. But then we're going to be exploring how they relate to the cotangent function, the hyperbolic cotangent function, and through that, the zeta function. So first, we're going to do it the way Bernoulli did. And this involves spotting patterns in the formulae that sum the integers to a given power. So I've written my notation up here so everyone's clear on what it means. When I say Sm of n minus 1, I mean the sum starting from 1 and ending at n minus 1 of k to the n. So when I let m equal 1, I'm summing the integers. When I let m equal 2, I'm summing the squares of the integers. And I've written out the first six values of m here. Now, the first one of these will, of course, be quite familiar. The second one you may have seen before. The ones after that, probably slightly less common, but again, you may have encountered them. And what Bernoulli did is he looked for patterns. He was trying to derive a general formula for s, m, n minus 1 in terms of m. So his first step was to look for any patterns he could find. What he noticed was the leading term is where we start. For s3, the leading term is a quarter n to the 4. For s2, it's a third n to the 3. For s1, it's a half n to the 2. And so it seems that in general, for sm of n minus 1, our leading term will be 1 over n plus 1 times n to the power of m plus 1. And so using this information, what Bernoulli does is he factors out that 1 over m plus 1 term for each row. So on our top row, we're going to factor out a half from every term. On our second row, we're going to factor out a third from every term, which looks doable. And we're going to continue down as, as follows. So I'm going to rewrite this having done that next step. And then we're going to see what patterns we can spot next. OK, so welcome back. What I've done is I've factored out half from the top row, a third from the second row, and continued down factoring out 1 over m plus 1. And we can see the new expressions that we've got here. Well, it looks like we've, we've gotten all the information we can out of our leading term. So let's shift our view onto the second column here. And look at the coefficients that we've got. We've got minus 1, minus 3 over 2, minus 2, minus 5 over 2, minus 3, minus 7 over 2. Now clearly all of these are multiples of negative a half. And we can see it's decreasing by negative a half each time. So that's quite an important observation to make. And although it's not as neat as the coefficients we have over here, every coefficient of our third column is a multiple of 1 sixth. And again, if we move along, every coefficient here, although this one might not look quite so obvious, is a multiple of negative 1 over 30. And this kind of suggests that these numbers might have some importance, perhaps because they're showing up everywhere in these columns. And so Bernoulli's next step was to do as we did before and factor these out to see what it leaves us with and if we can observe any more patterns. So welcome back again. What we've done now is we've factored out negative a half from this column, a sixth from this column, negative one over 30 from this column, and I've factored out a one over 42 here, and the reason I've done that will become apparent later. But these columns are the one we're focusing on for now. So we've been left with another series of numbers. Can we spot a pattern here? Well, this pattern's pretty obvious. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, I think we all know what they are. But what's interesting about them is that there's a deeper pattern going on, and that is exposed probably most easily by our third column here. Because the numbers 3, 6, 10, 15, 21 will be familiar to many of you as triangle numbers. So that's 1 plus 2, that's 1 plus 2 plus 3, that's 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4, and it continues as we go on. But what's most important to note is that these numbers appear in Pascal's triangle. So if I write out the first few uh, columns, we can see that our coefficients of our first column here are just one, and they correspond to a diagonal there. Our next coefficients are two, three, four, five, 
and they correspond to a diagonal there. Our ones after that are 3, 6, 10, corresponding to a diagonal there. Now we seem to have a gap, we seem to be jumping and missing some, and then our next coefficients are following a diagonal here with 5, 15, 35, and again there seems to be a jump, we don't have a 6, and then we end up with a 7, and we would end up following along a diagonal there. So although it's not perfect and we seem to be missing some weird parts, we seem to be following Pascal's triangle. And the only unpredictable element of these formulae is these weird numbers we factored out here. 1, negative a half, a sixth, negative 1 over 30, and 1 over 42. So what we're going to do for the final time is see if we can write all of these in terms of entries on Pascal's triangle. And any time that we skip an entry, I'm going to put a coefficient of zero just to make this laid out more neatly. And this is the last time we're going to rewrite things and it will enable us to not only understand what Bernoulli numbers are fully, but also to find a formula for Sn of n minus one. So what we've clearly captured now is that with S2, for example, our coefficients travel along the third row of Pascal's triangle, right? Really, we've got a 3, 0 here, because that's where our 1 comes from. Then we've got a 3, 1, a 3, 2, and we always stop before we get to 3, 3. So we always stop when our number is 1 less than the final number in that row. And this pattern continues all the way along, and our powers just decrease by 1 each time. And the only thing that we don't understand about this that's kind of elusive is these number coefficients. We've got a one here, we've got a negative a half here, we've got a one sixth here, we've then got a zero for some reason we don't understand, we've then got negative one over 30, we've got another zero, and as we continue along, we're gonna find more and more mysterious numbers. And it's these numbers that form the Bernoulli numbers. So we would define B zero as one, B one as negative a half, B two as one sixth, b3 as 0, etc. as we go along. And actually one thing you'll notice is that after b1, every other odd Bernoulli number is 0. Um, so now that we have defined these sequence of numbers as Bernoulli numbers, we don't really know how to find them yet, we'll get on to that. But now that we've defined this, we can finally write the formula that we're looking to write. So, given a sum of integers to the power of m up to n minus 1, we know now that our first step is to factor out everything, a 1 over m plus 1, and after that we've got a sum, and we're going to start it from k equals 0, and we're going to end it at m, and of course we're going to have that the top number of our Pascal's triangle, the row that we're on, is always m plus 1, it's always 1 greater than the power, and we move along that row by k. So we start at 0, we go to 1, 2, 3, 4, blah, 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 all the way up to m, which is 1 less than m plus 1. We've, of course, got to include our Bernoulli number, which I'm writing as bk. And then our final step is that, of course, our first power has to be n to the m plus 1, and it decreases by 1 each time, so we'll subtract the k. And so this has given us a formula for the sum up to n minus 1 of the integers to the power of m. And that is kind of what we're looking for, and this satisfied Bernoulli enough. But this sequence of numbers is applicable in many more places than just there. And actually Euler was one of the ones who found a, a really interesting function where the Bernoulli numbers show up, which is kind of crucial to everything we're going to be discovering next. And I'm not going to go too much into it, I'm going to save most of it for the rest of the video next time. But he discovered what's called the Bernoulli generating function. And any of you who have come across a generating function before will know that it's a function that has a Maclaren series for which the coefficients of that Maclaren series contain some information or contain a sequence of numbers. So the Bernoulli generating function is x over e to the x minus 1. And that's because it has a Maclaren series of the form bk x to the k divided by k factorial. So this means it's an exponential generating function. If it were a normal generating function, we wouldn't have the factorial on the bottom. It would just have Bernoulli numbers as a coefficient. Because it's an exponential generating function, our first term, of course, is just going to be b0. 
our next term is going to be b1x, but our term after that is going to be b2 over 2 factorial x squared, and our term after that will be b3x cubed over 3 factorial, and it will continue on like so. But this is a really good formula to know because it means just by differentiating the function x over e to the x minus 1, a given number of times we can find out a corresponding Bernoulli number as long as we multiply by the factorial. And we're going to be using this relationship to explore how we can relate, relate Bernoulli numbers to cotangent, hyperbolic tangent, and eventually the zeta function. But I'll leave that to you guys to have a look at later. I'm going to put up a list of the first 10 Bernoulli numbers now on the screen. And as a challenge, I'd like to leave to you prove the Bernoulli numbers are irrational. And you can do this via finding a recurrence relation for the Bernoulli numbers. So I hope you've enjoyed this video and see you in the next one.